Hello, Assalamu alaikum, friends. So, this is the practice test 1 FM, and we are starting with section B. Section A and B is similar. The only difference in section B is you have this case study on the left side, right? You have a little scenario on the left, and based on the scenario, you have to answer. Okay. So, let's start the first, okay. I always say that it's better to read the four options or read the question before you read the case study or read the information okay the reason is because when you read the requirements you'll be better understanding it when you're going through the case study the scenario you will understand what information I need for it so the question is what is the six month forward exchange rate okay now you can see the depth of it this section A and B questions can be asked from anywhere from the syllabus that's why it's important that you should know the whole syllabus in financial management okay so what is the six month forward exchange rate predicted by interest rate parity definitely you should know how to use interest rate parity right if you don't know if you forgot the function uh, the formula is there go to help formula shed open the formula shed and if you go up you will be seeing the interest rate parity this is the interest rate parity okay 1 plus the interest rate of the counter currency divided by 1 plus the interest rate of base currency into the spot rate. Okay. So now let us read. Heard is based in a country whose currency is in dollar. Okay. So we know the home currency is dollar. And the company expects to receive 1.5 million in 6 months time from fine company or foreign customers. So your domestic currency or home currency is dollar. Your foreign currency is euro. For always whenever exchange rate questions are there you have to decide that what is your home currency what is your foreign currency because based on that you will be using the interest rate parity okay what will go in the numerator which interest rate will go in the numerator which will go in the denominator will decide on what is your foreign currency and your home currency okay the finance director of the herd is concerned that euro may depreciate against dollar before the foreign customer makes payment and she is looking at hedging the reset all those things you can quickly read okay it's not relevant for this HUD has an issue loan loss with a total, total nominal value of 4 million which can be redeemed in 10 years time. Okay. The interest paid on the loan loss is at a variable rate linked to LIBOR. The finest rate of HUD will is that interest rates may increase in the near future. Okay. So what is it? They have a loan note. Okay. Now the interest is paid on variable rate. Okay. So because the interest is being paid in variable rate, the second paragraph says they, are, they want to hedge it. Why? Because they are, have that fear that interest rates might increase in the future. And you know that variable rate, okay, when interest rate increases in the future, you have to pay the higher interest rate. That's why they want to hedge it. So the first and the second scenario is just giving you the idea, the background. What's important is from your third paragraph, what do you need to take, okay? So if you are thinking that you should take this 4 million and 10 million, do that, you know, take annuity factor, do all those things for 10 years, discount the 4 million and all those things, then you are wasting your time. That is not what the question asks. This is about exchange rate. So what do you basically need? You just need the interest rate of the two currency. Okay. The two countries interest rate you need. And what else you need? The spot exchange. You just need the exchange rate and the two interest rate of the two countries, the dollar and the euro. That's a unit. So the spot exchange rate is given 1.543. The domestic short term interest rate is 2.5%. Okay, here mention the word they have told domestic. They didn't say whether it's a dollar and euro. Domestic is definitely it is dollar. And your foreign short term interest is 5%. Okay, 2 and 5%. And your euro is, is what? 1.5%. 543 okay so what should you know you just okay you can use your calculator okay so the interest rate parity is what your interest rate parity is 1.543 that is your exchange rate multiply by okay first i'm going to the multiplication part separately and then i will divide or you can even put bracket also. If you want to put bracket, 
just go here and then put a bracket okay but just just a minute okay you are going to delete you are multiplying and you put bracket so division is performed separately okay what is that division which interest rate are you taking in the numerator what interest rate you are multiplying what you are dividing very important is that you should understand and another thing very important if you are taking the interest rate 2% and 5% as it is and putting it here in that formula you are not going to get the correct answer because read the question properly the question asked the six month it is half of a year and this spot exchange rate is the for the whole year so what should you do and if you see the interest rates this interest rates are per year you have to find you have to use the interest rate for six months only that means half of it half of what is given to you because only for six months so that means this is two percent you'll be using one percent and this is five percent you'll be using 2.5 percent keep in mind what needs to be multiplied it is simple just look at this currency okay look at the spot exchange rate when it's given look at the currency it is in euro okay so and it is a counter currency you just look at the counter currency counter currency means a number with a value okay when something is one that is known as base currency so your counter currency comes on the numerator if you see the formula also interest rate of counter currency divided by interest rate of base currency so that means counter currency is euro so euros interest you have to multiply and dollar interest you have to divide understood so euro is what euro is this five percent foreign interest but you have to take 2.5 percent because for six months so what are you going to do one plus 2.5 percent that will be 1.025 okay divide by divide by what just add one with the interest okay 1.01 the interest rate of dollar that is your base currency dollar is your base right not two percent one percent because for six months enter what is it 1.566 they have rounded up okay so the correct answer is this okay now students there is another thing okay which you can use to see whether you are correct or not this is not very accurate but at least this will lead you from making an incorrect if let's you can check if you have made it a mistake let's say rather than this you don't know how to calculate okay you are confused between the four options this 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 at least you can remove the incorrect options okay you can reduce your you can minimize your options so that you are more likely to reach to the correct answer how just look at the interest of the two currency okay so your interest will tell you whether your exchange rate will go up or down okay dollar has to appreciate or depreciate dollar is the domestic currency dollar is two percent okay if your exchange rate sorry if your interest rate is lower that con that country's exchange rate will appreciate okay you can write here you can make a note somewhere okay, please make a note somewhere when i'm telling this when your interest rate is lower your exchange rate will appreciate when your interest rate is higher your exchange rate will depreciate if you cannot memorize both the ways just understand one way higher the interest rate your exchange rate will depreciate that's why if you see before it was 1.543 equal to one dollar now the same one dollar is 1.55566 so the value of the dollar went up dollar of the value should go up because interest rate of dollar is less two percent compared to five percent so lower the interest rate value of your exchange your currency value will go up it will appreciate higher your interest rate the value will go down so definitely this tells you that whatever exchange rate you get because since this this is lower interest rate dollar is lower interest rate that means dollar has to appreciate that means one dollar will be equal to more euros now okay so that means it has to be something more than 1.543 definitely looking at the interest rate of the two country dollar interest rate is lower so dollar will appreciate compared to euro so it tells you that it will be more than 1.543 so definitely these two answers are not in the list okay 
1.499 and 1.52 because they are less than 1.543. Now you are only left with two options, third and the fourth one. Okay. So now you have a higher chance of getting it correct because option is out of this two rather than this four. Imagine if it was this two, definitely you are wrong. But at least you have a chance over here. Okay, this is a chance in case you don't know how to calculate. But definitely you can check at least, let's say you have clicked this answer. Even if you are, you have just guessed it, okay? Still, you can check through this way that this interest rate is lower, the dollar. So dollar has to appreciate, that means this has to be more. So definitely this is wrong. You can just select out of this two then and proceed. These are some smart techniques. If you apply, you can know whether you are correct or not. You can check. Even though the number accurately, you cannot say whether it's correct or not. At least you will be knowing whether it's the higher figure or the lower figure, the range. Okay. Coming to the next question. This is the second question. Okay. There will be 10 questions in section B. Okay. As regard to the euro receipt, this is the same uh, case study. Okay. What is the primary nature of risk faced by herd? So we have already read it previously. So don't waste your time reading it again. You can read again if you want to understand it better. But if you have understood it in, in the first time when you have read it, don't waste time reading it again. You can quickly answer this because this all saves your time. Transaction economic translation business. Okay, eliminate the incorrect ones if you are confused. Definitely not business risk because this is something to do with euro receipt. Okay, something to do with exchange rate. So business risk is not there. Not economic risk because economic risk is something in the long term. Okay. If it was economic risk, they would have not hedged it. You cannot hedge economic risk. It's in the long term nature. They would have talked about the country policy and all those things. So not economic risk also. Now you have between two options. Transaction and translation. Okay. Translation risk comes when you translate your financial statements at the year, year end. You might have difference. Okay. So that difference, either you might have exchange gain or exchange loss. Foreign exchange gain or loss, which is recorded in a reserves. We know that in the accounting, SBR. Or in the financial reporting, we have, we know that. So it is not translation, it is transaction risk because we can hedge. We are hedging it, short term, transaction risk. Next. You have to see in your mind, whatever I'm just explaining you now, okay? This thing has, has to go in your mind when you are answering the such questions. Okay. And this question again, it is the same. Okay. You will be asked five questions from the same scenario. Okay. So if you have under, read it and understood the first time, you don't have to read it again and again and waste time. Okay. The next. So which of the following hedging methods will not be suitable for hedging the euro reset? Forward money market currency future. We can use forward just okay. Previously, the first question asked what is the forward rate? Money market. Why not? We can use money market. Interest rates is given in the two country. In this case study, okay. They are not saying generally. Generally, you can use all the four methods to hedge the euro reset. But in this condition, they are asking you based on the case study, the information they have given. If you are not sure, look at the amount of information they have given you. Based on this, what are the, uh, how can you uh, hedge? Can you hedge using forward? Do we have the rates? Can you use using money market? Do we have the information needed? For money market hedging, what do we need? We need the two interest rate. One is borrowing, one is investing of the two country. And we have it. We have the spot exchange rate. So money market hedging also we can use. Forward also we can use. Currency future also we can use. Because we have the spot exchange rate. Okay. We have the interest and all. So, the one which we cannot, which is not suitable for this euro receipt is currency swap. Because they, why, why currency swap is not suitable? Because they have not given us any information on the other party. The counterparty. With the fixed rate for the loan. If, if they would have given information that they want to swap for a fixed rate, okay, the variable rate for a fixed rate. Counterparty's information is there. And this is the rate at a fixed rate. Then you could have used currency swap. But here, such information is not given. Look at the second paragraph. They already talked about variable rate. So currency swap is not suitable. Next. 
same case study okay five questions will be asked in the same case study there are three case studies okay i'm sorry there are two case studies and five questions will be asked from each of these two so indicate by clicking on the relevant boxes in the table below whether or not each of the following statements support the directors believe that euro will depreciate against dollar highlight it so the two statements it should support either support okay so what is it look, look at the first one okay the dollar inflation rate is greater than the euro inflation rate so they are talking about inflation rate what is this purchasing power parity where you are using the inflation rate of the two country that is known as purchasing power parity okay so does it support the directors believe what is the directors believe that euro will depreciate against dollar so if the dollar inflation is greater than euro inflation rate will euro depreciate against dollar okay think break down the information you will not understand in the first instance don't memorize memorization also will not help you don't guess don't just guess and click something no guessing work here this is something which is should be very very easy for you okay so so let us understand dollar inflation is greater than the euro inflation rate which country's inflation rate is greater dollar so if dollar's inflation is greater means what dollar will depreciate dollar should depreciate against euro but here the they are believe is euro will depreciate against dollar euro will depreciate against dollar means if you see the euro's inflation it is lower than dollar so if you are having a lower inflation rate your currency will appreciate not depreciate so this it does not support the director's belief i hope you are able to understand euro okay just look at one currency okay don't take two currencies and get confused don't take euro dollar just look at any one currency either you can take euro either you can take dollar let us take euro okay euro will depreciate against dollar euro will depreciate so if for euro to depreciate euro's inflation rate should be greater right so if you read the statement they said dollar inflation is greater than euro that means euro inflation rate is lower so if euro's inflation rate is lower euro cannot depreciate so it does not support next interest rate they are talking about the interest rate of dollar and euro what is this interest rate parity to nomin okay the dollar nominal interest rate is less than the euro interest rate. it supports it supports the directors believe why just look at the wordings see both inflation and interest works in the same way if you have understood the inflation part you have understood the interest part also inflation interest same if the dollar inflation or dollar interest both are higher that currency will depreciate dollar will depreciate okay so here they have told you see i don't know i'm not okay i'm not able to click it dollar inflation rate is greater than euro so it's not correct but if dollar interest rate is lower than euro not greater less than euro then it will be correct it suppose the directors believe because lower interest means sorry higher interest means it will support depreciate lower interest rate means it will not depreciate okay just work with any one currency for you to understand it don't if you are confused between the two what is appreciating what is depreciating you can even make in your scratch pad you can make some notes okay the dollar is appreciating what's happening interest rate is high in dollar what's happening to the appreciating or depreciating you can make it in the scratch pad and all if you are confused next same i think this is the last question for this yes okay as regards to the interest rate risk faced by her which of the following statement is correct which of the following statements is correct is correct means only one okay in exchange for a premium hurt could hedge his interest rate risk by buying interest rate options please read the options for, re, first read all the four options okay if you are not even understanding also in the first instance what it means leave it later come again and then you will be able to understand it better after you have read all the four options buying a flow will give hurt a hedge against interest rate increases buying a floor you have to understand what is this floor cap and collar okay in the interest rate risk 
there are so many things okay options futures forward everything hurt can hedge this interest rate risk by buying interest rate future now in order to sell them at a future date so they are talking about future they are talking about flow they are talking about options three hedging techniques already they have mentioned the last one taking out a variable rate overdraft will allow for to hedge the interest rate risk through matching through matching it's an internal hedging matching what should be the answer same way eliminate all the incorrect answer okay and the right answer is this option they should go to option okay so you can eliminate what happens when floor is there what happens when the future is there and with the variable rate overdraft now this is the next case study so we have to read it but the question asks using the dividend growth model what is the market value of each ordinary share to two decimal places okay using the dividend growth model okay let's read ring has an issue ordinary shares with a nominal value of 0.25 per share the shares are traded on an efficient capital market it is now 2006 and company has just paid a dividend of 0.45 per share recent dividends of the company as follows ring has also issued loan notes which are redeemable in seven years time at their nominal value 100 per loan note and they paid interest of six percent per year the finance director wishes to determine the value of the company cost of equity 10 percent before tax cost of before tax cost of debt four percent and company pays corporation tax of 25 percent per year here they are talking about dividend growth model so you should not touch this part okay nothing to do with this part okay everything is not required in the first question only some pieces of information from the case study might be asked in the later questions here they just ask the dividend growth model so you should not touch this before tax cost of debt not needed corporation tax not needed okay what do you need you need cost of equity okay let me highlight it you need cost of equity 10 percent cost of equity 10 percent because still equity and dividend valuation model equity dividend equity dividend you pay dividend to whom to equity shareholders so that way you link okay don't find cost of capital you don't have to find cost of capital and discount and do all this is not needed dividend valuation model they are told or dividend growth model so cost of equity only you have to use next in the dividend growth model okay let me open that formula and show you what else you need so if you see Oh. so if you see the dividend the growth model what do you need you need a g dividend already you have the current dividend cost of equity that is re and g you need a g you need a growth rate okay how will you find the growth rate based on this dividends which is given to you you should know the formula to find the growth rate when there are dividend given for many years because we definitely know when it's just given for two years the difference between the two and divided by the old dividend we know how to find the growth rate like that but when it's given for number of years you should be able to know it okay already the current dividend is given you have to find the growth cost of equity is given so your job is just to find the growth that's it once you find the growth put that growth in the dividend growth model and find the value okay you can use calculator to do that so the formula for finding the growth rate when you are given number of uh, dividend for multiple years is newest dividend okay what is the newest dividend 2006 0.45 divided by the oldest dividend oldest dividend is 2002 not 2005 you have to take the oldest means the 0.37 okay you can put it in bracket also if you want to give it in one go or you can do it separately let us put it in bracket Okay, 0.45 and 0.45 only. Okay, that you don't have to worry. This to the power when you want to show the power, take it to the power. Okay, and this power when you want to show it in terms of fraction, put this n over d. Okay, on the first it will be one. Okay, one over the number of years. And when you want to go down, you can press this. What is d? How many years? very very careful okay most of you make this mistake 
What do you do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You put 5. But if you look carefully, this is not 5 years. This is 4 years. Why? From 2002 to 2003, it's 1 year. From 2003 to 4, another year. 4 to 5, another year. 5 to 6, another year. So how many? 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. 4 years. Okay? Not just, don't take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? It's 4 years. From 2002 to 6, if you take 6 minus 2006 minus 2002, 4 years. That's how you decide. Okay? So 4. So it's 4. Okay? When you want and remember and minus 1. Okay? Finally minus 1 is the growth rate. When you put minus 1 over here, it comes in your, it comes inside your power. So this you should avoid. Okay? Delete. You have to put this sign again. It should go outside 1 over 4. Minus. I'm sorry. Uh, not my, uh, again, again, you have to put it double two times. Okay. So that once it goes and it comes down again, it should be shown like this minus one. Okay. Enter. If you see, what is it? 0 0.05. Take to two decimal places. So if you take to two decimal places, it is 0 0.05. That means 5%. So your growth, definitely, it should be less than cost of equity only. Otherwise, your value will become negative, right? Cost less, less than 10%. So, this is 5%. So, growth is 5% now. You can do this in step by step also. Or in one go like this. So, it's 5%. Now, what else? Use the calculator again. Clear everything. Dividend into? Dividend into what? 1 plus the growth rate. So, dividend is 0 0.45. 45. Sorry. It is 45 into 1 plus the growth rate. Okay. Multiply by bracket. 1 plus the growth rate. What was the growth rate? 5%. So, 0 0.05. Close bracket. Now, the whole thing you need to divide by what? Okay, I will do it separately, step by step, okay? Enter. This you need to divide by what? Cost of equity minus growth. So, cost of equity is 10%, 0 0.1. And cost of, sorry, growth is 5%. Or you can just write 0 0.05, divide by 0 0.05. Enter. 9.45. This is your value for market value of ordinary share. You understand? Next. Same. Okay. What is the market value of each loan note? Now they are asking the market value of each loan note. Now you have to touch this part, the loan note, this paragraph. And also you need to use some uh, this information. Okay. Before tax, cost of debt and corporation tax is needed. What is the formula? when you see about the loan okay whenever they ask market value of loan note or market value of a debt first of all decide or read you will see in the case studies given whether it's a redeemable or irredeemable loan why am i telling you you have to differentiate because the way you calculate the market value is different if it's irredeemable it's much easier okay if most of the time they will be giving you redeemable but you never know and if it's redeemable, there are long procedure of doing it. So first you should know from the case study, redeemable or redeemable. Then you decide on the market value of loan. Okay, you need the interest rate, then you need the cost of debt to discount and all those things. Okay, you need a interest amount and a principal amount. Okay, so when you read this paragraph, the ring has also issued a loan notes which are redeemable in seven years time. It's redeemable. How many years? Seven years. Working is required here, okay? Definitely for working and all, you will not be given marks in this section, section B. But for your purpose, you need otherwise you, for you to get the correct answer. Okay? And the nominal value of 100 per loan note. So, this 100 is the principal value. Okay? And this 100, you will be paying when? In the, in the seventh year. So, you have to discount that also. 
okay basically the present value of all the interest plus your principal for the seven years that is the market value of loan note and the interest so interest is what six percent interest is what six percent and when it's a redeemable debt what do we take before tax cost of debt so you don't have to adjust it for tax go to the case uh, your textbook if financial management is there for redeemable use before tax cost of debt to discount okay so now how are you going to do this it is simple if you know how to use formula but if you want to do it manually it will take time i can show you both the ways of doing it but definitely it's better if you can use the formula the annuity factor and all those things it saves a lot of time but before i show you the annuity factor first let me show you manually in case some of you might have learned in manually because seven years is a long time if you, if it was one year two three years it's much easier to do it manually but seven years still we'll use a calculator okay so what is the interest first decide the interest principal amount 100 in the seventh year we'll deal with it but interest is six percent so this interest is six percent okay six percent on this 100 so six percent on 100 is what six only so the interest is six that means first year second year third year fourth year fifth year sixth year seventh year also you are paying six 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 like this you will keep on paying till seven year in the seventh year it will be 106 six of interest and 100 of the principal amount that all these years when you are paying the interest six 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 and finally you are paying 100 plus six you need to discount it that discount factor is this four percent you are discounting it by four percent before tax cost of debt and adding all the values for the seven year whatever the value you get that is the market value of your loan okay so manually if you do it will take a lot of time but i will show you manually for those students who want to see manually also so that when then i use annuity factor you will better understand okay manually if you are using first year you are paying six okay you need to discount this the six you cannot keep six as it is discount factor is four percent okay you can either discount it uh, six divided by 1.04 or you can take go to the function formula shade okay go to the present uh, discount rate go to four percent and look for each year first year this is the rate second year this is the rate third year this is the rate fourth year this is the rate fifth year this is the rate sixth and seventh or you can use six divided by six into one divided by 1.04 plus six divided by one divided by 1.04 to the power two but it will take a lot of time so let's just use the formula okay six multiply by you are looking in the four percent not six percent don't go and see the six percent this is the mistake you have to do six percent interest means you are taking six percent on 100 that is that's how you are getting six the discount factor is four percent okay not six percent so in the first year it is 0 0.962 0 0.962 okay you can put bracket better to put bracket just uh let's clear all put a bracket six multiply by 0 0.962 look at on the four person okay plus first year six into 0 0.925 close bracket this is the second year third year do you see how much time you are taking okay 0 0.9 sorry 889 third year fourth year you are taking 0 0.823 fifth year Okay, 
so this is fourth year fifth year it is 0 0.784 plus sixth year 0 okay sorry delete 6 into 0 0.7 seven four six and finally in the seventh year you are taking the interest six into zero point seven one one now in the seventh year we are in the seventh year now you have to take the hundred also the principal amount this you will discount at what rate seventh year's discount rate also same okay zero point seven one one Now close the bracket. You are not able to close it. Okay, because you have clicked all the digits, so just remove this bracket. What happened i just pressed clear everything is deleted right so what can i do to bring it out? there's no way that you can bring it out okay i'm sorry by mistake i have pressed that so again we have to do okay so again i'm not doing it i will just do it manually and show you the answer Okay, the answer if you do, okay, it will be 100 into this 0 0.711. Finally, okay, the answer will be this. So the amount you are getting this is the answer and uh, i'm sorry i have made some mistake what mistake did i do i took this 0.71 if you see it is in the five percent interest rate so when you're taking interest rate like this you have to know which column it's better that you highlight the column it's hard because when you come to highlight everything will be highlighted okay so this is the amount okay 112.018 18 this is the amount i'm getting manually and if you see the value here 100.018 so it will be this now use it's much easier if you know how to use annuity table because this is seven years so what you have to do okay simply go to this go to the annuity uh, table go to under four percent and go in the seventh year okay it is 6.002 so 6.002 annuity factor in the seventh year multiply by what you have to multiply the annuity factor for the interest not the principal amount the interest is six okay plus amount of loan is hundred uh, okay that is your principal amount principal amount you have to use discount factor that you cannot use annuity factor because hundred the loan amount you are paying in the end of seven year only once so what is the discount factor in the seventh year you have to go back up again and look at the four percent 0 0.76 0 0.76 so if you see this is much easier right in fact this is more correct when you round up also so 112.012 okay so whenever such questions are there where you have to find the market value of loan and redeemable for many number of years use the annuity factor for the interest part okay next the finance director of ring has decided to calculate the net asset value of the company highlight it Let us say, which of the following formula calculates correctly? For you to know this answer, you should first know the formula of net 
asset present value for a net asset value at the first place so what is it total assets less current liabilities no non current assets plus net current assets no it is net asset okay so net asset means you have to take non current assets also you have to take current assets also then you have to take li li minus liability so in the first one you took total assets less current liabilities it is not the total asset because it is net asset they are talking about net asset non current asset plus net current assets no you have to deduct your liability third one non current assets plus current assets less total liability and find non current assets less net current assets less non current liability so definitely is the third one because we don't less net current assets from non current assets okay we add non current and current and then deduct total liability that means assets minus liabilities total assets minus total liability is your net asset value next which of the following statements about valuation method is true okay is true means only one statement earnings yield method multiplies earnings by the earning yield is it no nope, it's not equity market value is number of shares multiplied by share price plus the market value of debt is it Nope. Next, dividend valuation model makes an unreasonable assumption that average dividend growth is constant. Yes. For now, it's yes, but don't answer before reading the fourth option. The price earning ratio method divides earnings by the price earning ratio. No. So it is definitely this because what happens in the dividend valuation model? The growth which we found G previously we have done it for the first question in this case study. It's just an assumption and it's unreasonable because growth will change, right? It will not remain at 5% forever. Next. Indicate by clicking on the relevant boxes in the table below whether each of the following statements about capital market efficiency. So from interest rate to dividend valuation model to capital market efficiency. Do you see the variation of the syllabus asked in one question, one section itself? Okay. So, insider information cannot be used to make abnormal gains in a strong form efficient market. Correct or not, it is correct. You might be saying incorrect. Why? Yes, it is true. You can make abnormal gains in, in insider information. But look at the market also. It is strong form efficient capital market. There you cannot do anything. In the strong form efficient capital market okay second in a weak form there are three forms okay weak semi strong and strong in a weak form efficient capital market the share price ring share price reacts to any information the day after it is announced the day after it is announced correct or not it's incorrect they told that they react to the new information the day after it is announced. No, weak form efficient takes time to react. It does not react immediately. That's why it's weak. Drinks share price reacts quickly and accurately to new released information in a semi strong form efficient capital market. Yes, it reacts quickly and accurately to new released information in semi strong. It's correct. Next. Payback period of the investment project. What is the payback period? Okay, you can use a calculator for this. If you see your initial investment, uh, okay, wait a minute, just hold. Uh, this is a new case study, we didn't read it. Okay, so the following information relates to an investment project which being evaluated by directors of fancy listed company. Initial investment is 3.9, and you are given net operating cash flow and scrap value. Okay, if you see this paragraphs are not needed for this, okay, but we still will read it. The directors believe that this investment project will increase shareholder wealth if it achieves a return on capital employed greater than 15%. As a matter of policy, directors require all investment projects to be evaluated using both payback and return on capital employed method. Okay. 
Shareholders have recently criticized directors for using this investment appraisal methods, claiming that the company will be could be academically preferred net present value. Directors have a remuneration package which includes a finance, financial reward for achieving an annual return on capital employed greater than 15%. The remuneration package does not include a share option scheme. So all this are not relevant for this. For this, we just need the first part. Okay. When you're calculating payback on, on, okay. Okay, so the moment you, it's in minus, okay, so put minus three. You can put 3,900 or 3.9, okay. It's better we put 3,900 so that you don't get confused. 3,900, this is what initial investment, it will be negative. Now you keep adding your inflows to see at which point your payback, you are getting a positive return, okay. Plus first year net operating cash flow, okay, 1,200. Enter. Don't do it in one go. Separately, you have to do each time. Still, you are getting a negative. Again, add the second year also. Plus 5,500. 1,500. Again, enter. Again, it's negative in the second year. But your payback period is definitely between second and third year. How are you telling this? This is negative 1,200. But when you go to the third year, it is 1,600. More than 1,200. So, you will have a cash inflow of 400. A positive return. Right, so it's between two and three years. This tells you that your answer might will be either this or either this, not this or this, because it's between two and three. So it has to be two point something, either two point six five, either two point seven five. So this means it eliminates the other two options automatically. Now, add the thousand six hundred. enter 400 okay you can see the steps also first you add a thousand two hundred then thousand five hundred then thousand it is four hundred okay so it's in flow this is the this is the formula for using payback payback formula is not in your formula sheet okay so now enter sorry don't press enter otherwise it will add thousand six hundred again with four hundred so four hundred you got four hundred right divide by third year net operating cash flow okay because between two and three only you are getting your payback 0 0.25 okay i'm sorry what did i just do it was uh It was 1200 in negative, right? It was negative 1200. Okay. Don't add uh, 1600 with it. So leave it like that. Okay. 1200. Before you take the third year. Okay. So this 1200 divided by 1600. The next operating cash flow. Enter. Zero point. It's, remove the negative sign. Okay. This is just I'm trying to show that still in the second is our outflow. So 0 0.75. This you are doing this div division for you to get the fraction. But it's definitely 2 plus 0 0.75. So it is 2.75 years. Okay. Next. Based on the average investment method, which, what is the return on capital employed of the investment project? You make sure that you know what is this average investment method, okay? You must have known it by now. Here also you need to use this investment and this table only. Okay? So the formula, I'm sure you know it. What is the formula? Average of your operating cash flow or income or profit divided by average investment how do you take average investment okay we'll see that later now you are adding all your net operating cash flows okay 1200 plus 1500 plus 1600 plus 1580 plus your scrap value 100 enter minus your 
you have to deduct your initial investment okay that's how you are getting your profit so 3900 enter this needs to be divided by 4 because you are taking average so for 4 years we have so that means 2080 divided by 4 enter 520 520 comes in the numerator part keep 520 as it is what okay it's divided by average investment now average investment is what is your initial investment 3900 so average investment is this is the formula okay 3900 plus scrap value that is 100 divide by 2 don't divide by 4 the formulas itself there in the formula itself is there okay divide by 2 only investment plus scrap value divide by 2 so it's 2000 so what did we get in the top if you remember it's 520 if you don't remember what you can do is once you get a value over here when you are doing separately calculation in the scratch pad go and write the rough note okay 520 and then later you will know that what did i get before in case you might you forget okay what did you calculate early so now clear i got 520 divided by 2000 enter 0 0.26 this is your that means 26 percent okay next which of the following statements about investment appraisal method is correct in the last paragraph they told about investment appraisal share option that they are not giving share option they are giving financial world based on return on capital employed greater than 15 percent okay so what you uh, what is of uh, which of this is correct for the investment appraisal method okay that means they are talking about all the investment appraisal techniques or methods there are different methods okay the uh, to uh, the return on capital employed met, uh, method considers the time value of money does it we just saw it does not calculate time value of money we are not discounting anything so it's wrong return on capital employed must be greater than cost of equity if a project is to be accepted no why because we are seeing the net present value whether it's positive or negative to accept a project not return on capital employed greater than cost of equity second is also wrong third riskier project should be evaluated with longer payback periods riskier project should be evaluated with longer pay see longer the pay payback period more riskier our project is so it should not be evaluated with longer payback it should be evaluated with shorter payback period if your project is risky then there are then if you are taking a longer payback means it's more risk right for you to reduce the risk for the risky project what should you do you should take short payback period not long to long payback period okay payback period ignores the timing of cash flows within the payback period yes it definitely ignores the time cash flow when we did this we didn't see the fourth year cash flow we ignored it so is the fourth one which of the following statements about fence is or are correct is or are that means it could be one sentence or it could be more than one that's what they are saying okay so managerial reward schemes of listed companies should encourage the achievement of stakeholder objectives is it in the listed company definitely it should it should achieve the stakeholder objective so one is correct that shows that definitely is this one or this one or this one not this one because one is not included here requiring investment projects to be evaluated with return on capital employed is an example of die functional behavior encouraged by performance related pay definitely why because you are using return on capital employed to see whether they have performed or not it's a die functional behavior why based on performance it is encouraged based on performance so two is also there so definitely this one is also out of the option because two is also there so you know it's either this one one or two or one two and three fence has an agency problem as the directors are not acting to maximize the wealth of shareholders directors are not acting to maximize the wealth of shareholder he's having an agency problem definitely right just read it here it's there somewhere 
so it is 1 2 and 3 because their focus is just to increase that they have to achieve more than 15 percent because they know that they are going to get the remuneration they don't care about maximizing wealth of shareholder so it's 1 2 and 3 next which of the following statements about fans digest remuneration package is or correct this is about remuneration package okay make sure that you know what remuneration package consists of what are the benefits of having a good remuneration package what are the disadvantages of having bad and all those things how it links to the company's objective and all those things okay so director's remuneration should be determined by senior executive directors is it so most of you will fall for this trap and say it's correct because the word use the word you read is senior director it is senior executive director so it's wrong executive director never sets your remuneration it is the senior non-executive director just one word is not there that non and it changes the sentence word by word you have to read okay it's not senior executive it is decided by senior non-executive so one is not the right answer one is not the right answer that means definitely this and this is out of your option introducing a share option scheme would help director objectives in line with shareholders objective yes definitely because they will be focused on increasing the share price of okay it will maximize the shareholders wealth so two is there two is correct okay so we know it is either this or this one is out only two is there now let's see whether three is there or not so linking the financial rewards to a target return on capital employed just now we saw here 15 percent will encourage short term profitability and discourage capital investment definitely in the short term they might want to increase the profitability they just anyhow want to achieve that 15 percent so it's two and two and three so it's correct right two and three next so if you see the next is section c section c i will be discussing in the next video we have finished section b And I hope with this you have now a very proper understanding of how to attempt section A and section B. I have separately made the two videos on section A and B. If you haven't seen my video on section A, go and go and check it out. Okay, and I'll be coming with section C tomorrow. Till then, see you in my next video.